Okay, so in this video I will be checking out the Zazani uh, 5300G CPU on the EVGA X570 Dark. So the 5300G uh, Zazani CPU is a little bit tricky one because you can't really find it on the retail market. So, uh, so far it seems to be like an OEM only CPU, so you can find that CPU model among some uh, pre-built OEM systems. But it's still technically the fastest quad-core CPU in some specific tests. For example, GPU Pi 1 billion 5300G is still leading that category at 5.7 gigahertz. And uh, I would like to try this particular CPU on LN2 later. Maybe I could take that score down, who knows. So uh, on this one I will uh, go through both the CPU and the memory overclocking on this particular uh, CPU model. So the main difference of Zazani versus Wormer is that Zazani CPUs can reach much higher F-clock speed. So that means much higher one-on-one uh, -on -one memory overclocks. So uh, you need to maintain one-on-one -on -one ratio with F-clock and with the internal memory controller frequency and overall higher F-clock might yield you a higher memory overclock overall. So it will be very interesting. I've been testing both my uh, uh, Kingston HyperX Predator 4133 uh, Cas19 sticks and these uh, very nice G-Skill uh, Trident Z Royal sticks that Alexi from our Finnish uh, tech uh, community lent me some time ago and he asked me to remove the uh, heat sinks from those sticks. I used the very same uh, paint thinner method. So here's the uh, a heat sink itself, so the label is pretty uh, torn into pieces due to the uh, paint thinner liquid. But uh, anyways, it was very easy to remove the heat sinks from those sticks using that very same method and no damage whatsoever. So anyone who's uh, doubting that method, it's pretty safe, trust me. With these uh, Trident Z Royals, I had to keep the memory sticks uh, in the liquid for four to five hours before the uh, uh, heat sinks came off very easy. With some specific uh, sticks like the Corsair Vengeance DDR5, they only needed to be there for like one or two hours. And with the most stubborn memory sticks like the Corsair Dominator GT, they had to be in that liquid like uh, for well over one day, like 36 hours or so, something like that. But anyways, so uh, uh, I decided to make this uh, video a little bit different. So I will uh, wrap up both the 5300G uh, like overall overview together with the uh, G-Skill Trident Z Royals in the same video to make things uh, more simple and more entertaining and more useful. So I will just uh, go through my like achievements and my results uh, with screenshots to make uh, things a lot more simple and more entertaining to watch and more like uh, to just m make the video feel a lot more comfortable. So uh, now I will just switch onto the capture card and let's look at the things inside the BIOS and inside the operating system. Okay, so now I'm inside the BIOS. I'm using a beta BIOS from last October. So this is uh, just a very simple beta BIOS, but it doesn't really matter. I tried three different BIOSes. I tried a very old uh, retail one, so version 1.03 from last September. This beta BIOS and the latest retail BIOS of 1.07, which was released uh, in March of this year, and they all work pretty much the same. So the latest retail BIOS should be pretty much very good to go with. So uh, let's look at the settings first. So uh, 5300G and uh, currently I'm running the, uh, the Trident Z Royals, which are rated at 4800 CAS 17. So uh, let's go through the settings together. So uh, the maximum clock speed I managed to achieve on the CPU was between 4.8 and 4.85 uh, in tests like Cinebench R20. With these CPUs, we don't have AVX negative offset, so that's kind of minus. So you need to come down in the overall frequency for daily stable overclocks. So uh, if you uh, search for a daily stable overclock that can do uh, everything like fully stable in every possible situation, so uh, even uh, AVX and AVX2 instruction sets included, then you obviously need to come down in uh, the overall clock speed. So uh, if 4.8 was if 4.8 was my maximum, I would have to come down to like let's say like 4.7 or 4.65 for uh, that kind of clock speed. But let's do uh, 4.8 for you guys. Now the main difference between uh, Zazani and Wormer is the F clock, which I already mentioned. So Wormer, in my own testing, has been uh, topping 
somewhere around 2000 megahertz like i think the maximum i ever got was like 2033 so uh, that's obviously much lower than what we can do right now so the highest i was able to do was 2500 or even 2550 uh, with this particular cpu that's that is extremely high considering that was only done on water cooling so i will use 2400 because i'm going to be aiming for 4800 on the memory so uh, if you uh, do this very same thing so you can obviously find some other Cezanne uh, CPU models on the, re on the retail market, like the 5700G, which should be better all around. It should have much better IMC, so uh, you can definitely aim for these uh, clock speeds if you purchase the 5700G. So uh, if you go for, let's say, like 4800 one-on-one -on -one ratio, then be sure you select the U-clock divider to one-on-one, -on -one so that it doesn't accidentally uh, revert to one-on-two. -on -two. So it's better to just manually force one-on-one -on -one ratio 100 base clock then vico uh, as i'm using very strong custom water cooling i will use a voltage between 1.4 and 1.45 this is only a quad core cpu anyway so it doesn't output that much heat compared to some other cpu models like the 16 core verver or like the 5600x and so on the best low line calibration setting uh, for this particular motherboard model in my testing was 10%. So with 10%, the voltage at idle and under load was pretty much the same value. With 25%, I had some minor V-droop and we don't want to get that. So, let, so I think you should try a value of 10%. Now, uh, VCO PWM switching frequency, the official range is between 300 and 1000 kilohertz or one megahertz. The maximum you can actually set over here is 1.2 megahertz, so 1200 kilohertz, but that didn't work for me. If I tried to post and boot this setting, it would just result in a 00 debug code. So something uh, just shuts down in the VRM, so the VRM stops functioning properly. So do not set this high value. So I think you should use something like 650 or 750 or 800 kilohertz. Let's put 750 over here. Now, uh, SOC voltage is needed to push the F-clock very high. For F-clock speeds of 2500 and so on, I had to set the SOC voltage up to like 1.3 volts or so on, but uh, I don't think you want to go too high for daily use. I think 1.2 is still safe, but some people might want to run even a bit lower than 1.2, like 1.15 or so, but I will just set 1.2. These three might help you a little bit, for memory overclocking, but I'm not fully sure that do they actually have any real impact for daily like clock speeds on the memory. So uh, don't know about them, but they aren't set to any uh, dangerous value anyways. The rest can be uh, auto and memory. This was the uh, uh, setting table I used. So 4800, 1.52 volts, but the memory voltage is very tricky. You need to find the best like sweet spot value for your particular memory kit. So with this particular kit, and it was actually the same with my uh, Kingston Hyper Explorator sticks, 1.52 was very good value. If I set 1.55, it was unstable. If I set 1.48, unstable. 1.45, unstable, and so on. So you need to do tiny increments and find the best like sweet spot value for your kit. Higher doesn't always mean better. I even tried 1.6 and it was very bad for me. 18, 18, 18, 36. This doesn't work on every possible kit. I managed to get this uh, fully stable in HGMM test with these uh, Trident Z Royals, but with the Kingston HyperX, I had to uh, drop the TRCD and the TRP down to like 21, 21, or even 23, 23. So uh, you may be better off with 23, 23, 23, and so on. So uh, let's keep these at 18 for now. And uh, I think you need to keep the cast latency on uh, even values if you are running a, a gear down mode i think it was that so uh, at least when i'm using like command rate one i cannot set odd cast latency value of like, let's say like 17 or so but i managed to do even 18 17 17 17 28 on this particular kit for testing purposes even up to 5000 ddr4 but let's keep these at 18 18 18 now four six eight 23 and cast write latency can be at auto which will revert to 18 or drop that or you can drop it down to like 14 
then write recovery time can be at auto or let's manually set it to 10 on AMD the TR the TRFC is uh, split into three different uh, settings I manually set all of the three to 360 TRC is not present on Intel platforms I think good value over here is 56 or lower third timings are hard this time around so it's very easy to blue screen the system if you go very tight on the third timings but even on auto they do set to pretty okay value so it's pretty good to just leave them at auto and then over here let's uh, go to uh, hardware monitor and we can set this to either CPU or PWM or whatever we wish to monitor and now I will just set some of the fans to 100% so it can be like so and just uh, save save your uh, desired uh, profile into the uh, available uh, profile slots so let's try to post and boot these settings but please be aware so for some reason on this platform uh, the post process can be very hard even if your um, settings are fully stable in actual tests like R20, uh, Pri95 HGI mem test, well especially from memory perspective the uh, post process can often fail at F9 debug code and even if you let's say if you pre uh, if you press reset button then it might suddenly uh, post and boot successfully so uh, hanging at F9 debug code doesn't always mean automatically that the setting table is unstable it can be fully stable but for some reason it just uh, has some hard time posting so F10 save and exit Okay, so we just landed on the desktop. Here's the uh, main information of the CPU itself. So Zazani 5300G, 4.8 GHz. Don't know why the base clock is not exactly at 100 MHz. Here's the memory information. So DDR4, 60 GB. Uncore frequency, 2400. So 101 with the internal DRAM and frequency and common rate 1. 1888, 3656 common rate 1 beta bars from last October and here's the SPD information of this particular uh, kit so uh, uh, G-Skill 4800 17 19 19 39 1.6 volts so let's try to run CDBench R20 to show you the temperatures and uh, that this whole thing is actually stable because 4.8 for 5300G is actually pretty rough the highest uh, result on hardware bot for example for this CPU model is 4.7 on water no results whatsoever on air cooling and the maximum speeds on LN2 are 5.6 to 5.7 so they are significantly lower than on Vermeer like 5600X 5600X the highest ones are somewhere around like 5.9 and I could do uh, around 4.8 on water so this is already so this is already a bit higher on water and the target frequency is lower on LN2 so I think this CPU could have a very good chance to be the number one on LN2 but anyways so once again the temperature measurement completely sucks on AMD so we don't have the same level of temperature measurement compared to Intel so we cannot read temperature per core so over here for example we have CPU uh, TCTL slash TDI, don't know what that is, so CPU core, CPU SOC and the temperature of the APU and temperature of the L3 cache now this isn't like 100% stable so it's quite on the edge but it should be able to pass so uh, here this is the maximum so for 558, 61, SOC is at 32 no difference that much between idle I think and APU temperature and L3 cache so uh, core temp is reading 60 degrees Celsius but it's pretty uh, in the same range as hardware info so that's why I generally use core temp because it's a very simple program and uh, doesn't include all uh, all like uh, like many unnecessary things what we aren't so uh, interested in that much but yeah so let's see if it passes 46 watts roughly I don't know I really doubt this value I'm pretty sure it's higher than this for example the temperatures are very high for this kind of power measurement so uh, considering this water cooling has been able to cool 
uh, over 1000 watts on the Xeon uh, W3175X. This kind of temperature for just this uh, power consumption is very high. Okay, so the score was 3070. So uh, yeah, they, the temperatures did go lower once again, so they did work, but yeah, so 60 degrees uh, roughly. And uh, I think the maximum would be like 4.85, but it's very on the edge. So as you can see over here, the temperature measurement or the voltage measurement doesn't seem to be working that well, but yeah, 4.8. We could try it, but I'm pretty sure it's going to uh, fail. So let's do, let's raise the voltage to 1.45. I think it's still uh, somewhat safe on water. And uh, 4.85. Okay, so 4840.9. As the base clock isn't very accurate. And uh, let's see what happens. Also the F clock is right on the edge. Yep. Okay, so when it comes to the uh, memory overclocking, first I uh, tried with the Kingston HyperX sticks and so on, and uh, it didn't really uh, differ that much. So the maximum daily stable clock speed on the memory on both kits ended up being somewhere around 4800 to 4860. The result was the same, no matter was the uh, um, ratio 101 or 1 to 2. So uh, I could get for example, these G-Skill Trident Z Royals up to 5000, but uh, not fully stable in HEI MEM test. So uh, the first ones over here should be uh, with the Kingston HyperX uh, Predator sticks. So uh, 4800 with 18, 23, 23, 36 common rate one. This was, the, this was the same result as on the 5600X and the 5950X, so with the Wormer CPUs. But that was obviously with one, one to two ratio and with much lower f-clock speed of like 1800 or so, but fully stable, 8 threads, uh, 1800 megabytes each, so uh, roughly the maximum speed what was available. Then, so if we go further, I think should be, uh, so here's the full uh, information, so f-clock for this was at 2100, but of course it can go much higher as what we are already using, as we already use in 2400 at the moment. Then uh, some Gigment's free results. This was at uh, DDR4-5000 with 18-17-17 common rate 1. Still uh, 1 to 2 ratio at 2 to 33. So memory score was 10,593. And this obviously goes much higher once we uh, uh, get the ratio uh, tighter. So over here, for example, so I will go back to uh, uh, this one. So uh, here. Roughly the same memory configuration, so 2500, so DDR4 5000, 18, 18, 17, 17, 28, 56 common rate 1. But now, one on one ratio, so the uncle frequency is at 2500, 2500, and F clock at 2500, and the memory score was a whopping 11,458. Me memory voltage 1.5, SOC at 1.3, and same vehicle as what we are running at the moment. So uh, pretty good, I guess. And uh, this was my most recent daily stable run. So with these G-Skill Trident Z Royals at 4800, 18, 18, 18, 36 common rate 1. And uh, U-Clock, F-Clock, Mem-Clock, all at 2400. So uh, HEI uh, Mem-Test stable with 101 ratio at 4800 common rate 1. Pretty good result, if you ask me. So. Uh, I did try 4860, but it wasn't like consistent. So uh, it generally wanted to crash somewhere around like 10, 20 to 30 percent coverage in this test. But even so, 4800 is still pretty good, and uh, it's something it's something you can still achieve pretty easily. And this kit is just a random kit from a store. It's not some pre-binned sample from any vendor. Both the uh, HyperX Predator as this. Uh, as well as this uh, uh, Trident Z Royal, they are both just uh, random kits from a local store, pretty much. But yeah, so uh, I think you can do even a better result with uh, a better Zazani CPU, like 5700G. I don't know is the limit on the kit or on the IMC, but I'm pretty sure it's on the IMC, because both of the kits 
stop at exactly at, ex at exactly the same spot. So I'm pretty sure the IMC is the limiting factor over here. But so far it was very cool to be able to go over 5000. I think the highest frequency I saw, I, I saw like briefly was like uh, 5025 or 5050 with roughly the same timing table. And I tried to run Geekbench free at that frequency. And uh, I actually set up to 5100, but then it crashed. Uh, just on desktop. So pretty good results overall. So uh, yeah, I think that's pretty much it. So if you manage to find this particular uh, CPU model for low price on sites like eBay, it could be an interesting option. But but for this kind of motherboard, so uh, like the uh, EVGA X570 Dark, I think you should be getting the higher options like the 57, the 5700G or some of the higher core count models among the Vermeer uh, CPU family, like the 5950X, because these motherboards aren't very cheap in the end. But yeah, if you uh, like to see these results, and if you found this video helpful, then please give me a thumbs up. If you have any questions, then please drop them down below, and I try to answer them. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching one of my videos once again, and I will see you on the next one.